Thanks for joining us, and welcome back to the Watchman on the Wall podcast. Periodically, we'll bring you true stories of angelic encounters, heavenly visitations, near-death experiences, as well as modern-day prophecies that are relevant to us today. When we come back, we'll begin our next episode. Hello and welcome back. You know, with all the election fraud claims and the recounts, you know, it seems that we're at a tipping point right now. So today, Dana Coverstone has two new dreams that I would like to focus in on that I think would maybe shed some light on what our country is going through. And then in the second half of our podcast, Krista Alicia has had a vision and a word from God on the future of our country, which I think you'll find very fascinating. So we'll start with today, Dana Coverstone in his first dream, he calls the Lincoln Dream. Dreams, for the most part, are not literal, they're symbolic. Uh, I do believe we're seeing some of the things happen for sure, uh, but we'll just go from there. Here, so here it is. Uh, it's a dream I had on November 9, 2020. I saw Abraham Lincoln at the Lincoln Memorial and was standing up in his seat with his right hand held up and was being addressed by Uncle Sam. Um, there were spotlights aimed at his head and he was bathed in like this overwhelming light. And on the granite seat where he'd been sitting was a stack of law books and on the bottom was a simple brown leather rawhide Bible that was larger and thicker than any of the other law books on top. <clears throat> His top hat, the hat that Lincoln was known for using, was was standing on top, sitting on top of the law books, and it kind of made the stack look like a um, like a pyramid. Um, Uncle Sam asked him if he would tell the truth, the whole truth, so help him God. <clears throat> and Lincoln said, "That is all you will get from me on this day." Uncle Sam walked backwards uh, without turning around, and he stepped up onto a platform and removed his patriotic hat. And he whispered the words, I am sorry, towards Lincoln. Then he shifted his eyes to his right and left, and then to the right again, as if he were getting acknowledgement from people behind him. A voice shouted very loudly, get it over with already. And then a hand appeared and pulled a curtain along a piece of rope that appeared to be about 50 feet long. So they were just, just pulling a rope like this. And this made it appear as if the judge were standing in front of a large black backdrop. And on each side, hanging like almost like a banner waving down uh, <clears throat> was uh, a tattered American flag on a pole. Uh, Lincoln remained standing as if he had never considered even sitting on the seat. And there were marks on his face like he'd been assaulted. He had a sling over his left arm and a bandage around his left hand with, with blood showing through the palm. And he kept a very stern face but was obviously in slight pain from whatever had happened. Uncle Sam cleared his throat three times, and then he said, Hear ye, hear ye. The accused before you is here to admit his crimes publicly and will do so voluntarily. How do you plead, Mr. Lincoln? Not President, but Mr. Lincoln. President never blinked his eyes. He swallowed hard and he said, I won't. Uncle Sam winked at the President, asked again while grimacing in a way to get Lincoln's attention. I won't was repeated, and Uncle Sam looked back above and beyond the curtain behind him, and then looked back wearily. Mr. Lincoln, you must make a plea. But Lincoln responded by saying, well, then give me a trial by jury after I do. Lincoln simply looked straight ahead and said nothing. Two men then walked up behind Uncle Sam. Each went to a side, and they whispered in both of his ears. And Uncle Sam grimaced, and he dropped his head as the two men went back behind the curtain. Uncle Sam then stood before Lincoln and the crowd of people who had appeared near the chair at the memorial. And this crowd was aggressive, uh, mean-spirited. They held signs, and specifically they had torches in their hands. 
Lincoln stood taller and closed his eyes slowly after looking both to his right and his left and of each of the men who stood behind Uncle Sam. And these people consisted of federal elected and appointed officials, governors, and judges in their robes. Uncle Sam walked up to Lincoln and whispered in his ear and revealed tears running down his cheek. He chucked back a sob, choked back a sob, and he said, Mr. Lincoln, you have been found guilty by those in power and are sentenced to death by hanging for it. Mr. Lincoln said, as the former president of this union, I deserve to know what I am accused of to begin with. I am an attorney and I know what the law says. Uncle Sam stated clearly and precisely and with great struggle. We do not recognize the law of man or of God and simply find you worthy of death. Your time is over and a new dawn awaits those who will dwell on this earth. And at this time, the men standing behind Uncle Sam came forward and they put a noose around Lincoln's neck and they tightened it. <clears throat> then they pushed Uncle Sam forward while they threw the rope the end of the rope over a marble brace at the memorial and they handed the end of the rope to Uncle Sam and saluted him. Uncle Sam held that rope in his hands for a very long time and he wept and then he faced Lincoln and he said, I'm sorry, Mr. President. And at this statement, the men behind him pounded him about the head and neck until bruising began to appear in Uncle Sam's head. And they yelled at him and said this, you address him as Mr. Lincoln, nothing more. So Uncle Sam looked back at the men and said, you can hang me next for what I've allowed you to do to my conscience. He then started pulling on the rope. President Lincoln stood quietly and began to feel the tautness of the rope when he, when he, when he reached backwards and began firing to grab something on his seat. As Uncle Sam strained to pull and hold the rope, Lincoln was trying to grab his Bible and was pushing the law books off of it, but his fingers were slipping off of the binding. He did get a hold of it, but the jerking of the rope made him drop to the floor just as his feet left the floor. Lincoln's eyes, they showed compassion towards the elected and the appointed men in front of him. As Uncle Sam, holding the rope tight, would not look at anything but the floor. What's interesting to note in the dream, Lincoln never fought back after the Bible slipped from his hands. I know he was just swinging slowly. One of the judges, not the federal officials, one of the judges spoke up and said, you can drop him now. And Uncle Sam very slowly and respectfully dropped Lincoln to the floor. He looked back at the men and he said, I hope you get what you deserve for this. Then he held his chest and he dropped to the floor. He was dead within seconds with his eyes wide open and the crowd began to scatter, including the elected and appointed men who had been behind him encouraging this whole endeavor. At that very moment, the man appeared that I had seen in the dreams for so often. He knelt down beside President Lincoln and said, they didn't have any idea what they were doing. And now the nation needs to brace itself for what they deserve. He then walked over to Uncle Sam, closed his eyes tenderly and tapped the heart area three times. And he said, rest in peace, Uncle Sam. Sorry you had to see the ship go down. Then the man looked right at me in the dream. And he said, nation, specifically nation, brace yourself for fire and ice. And don't forget to anchor your soul. Hello again, this is The Watchman. Please join us each week for an exciting and inspirational podcast dealing with angel encounters, heavenly visitations, near-death experiences, as well as modern-day prophecies that are relevant to us today. So tune in each week and share it with your friends. After all, they could use a little inspiration in their life, too. That's The Watchman on the Wall podcast, and now you can find us on YouTube.
Now we'll hear from Dana Coverstone and his second dream. He calls this one the Franklin dream. This is the dream that I had on November 16th, uh, 2020. It features Benjamin Franklin. I saw Benjamin Franklin outside at night flying a kite among very stormy skies, lightning in the background, strong winds, and a very, very light rain. Uh, but the kite was an American flag, and that American flag seemed to be covered in a type of oil, or, or at least it had like a greasy sheen on it. Uh, and at the end of the kite was a globe, a small globe, attached to a chain, almost like a key chain you would have, okay? So hanging off of the flag, off the kite, uh, wasn't a key like Benjamin Franklin used when he first did you know, his, his search for electricity and things like that and how light, what, what was enlightening. Uh, it was just a, a, a globe attached to a chain uh, at the end of the kite. Uh, Franklin was, was holding the, the kite very steady in the rain. He was watching the lightning around him with very wide open eyes. He was, he was paying attention where the lightning was, obviously anticipating a strike on something. Suddenly his hand appears out of the heavens. And it grabs the flag and it squeezes. The hand squeezes around the flag in a very rough manner. It's just like like this, grabbing and squeezing. Almost violently. And the globe was hanging like underneath his hand. You, you couldn't see the flag in the hand of God who was squeezing the flag. But there was a chain running out and down and the globe was hanging out. And so as the hand was squeezing, the globe was shaking. That globe was hanging in its hand and flowing out of that squeezed hand was that mix of like oil and water. It was a sheen. Uh, it was it was uh, just like like a sheen you would see on an ocean if there's been an oil spill or on a body of water. And as it squeezed out of, out of the hand, the big hand, it just kind of rolled over the globe and fell back to the earth. And the rain and the lightning behind it was illuminating. It was like something. Uh, it was like uh, oil. Was, was coming from heaven instead of rain because of the sheen that was on the flag. Um, the hand kept squeezing, rolling back and forth like this. Squeezing and rolling back and forth with the flag inside. There was sifting going on inside that hand. You could hear things like shifting and sorting and moving in the hand. Um, and then the rain stopped and the hand opened up to reveal several large and I do mean large diamonds. There were large chunks of what appeared to be coal. That's what it looked like to me, large chunks of coal. But there was also a lot of trash in that palm. Almost like and it almost was covering, covering the diamonds. And then God reached down and just went with his hand, with his breath. And uh, a lot of that trash just went flying away from his hand and the only thing left in his hand was the diamond and the coals and then he lowered his hand to the earth and he rolled out the items in his hand and the diamonds were about the size of vehicles and the coal pieces were about the size of large boulders the, the coal was not as big as the diamonds and they were each laying on this beautiful green luscious healthy looking grass and the diamonds they were shining in their in their brilliance it was still night it was still night it wasn't daytime now it was still it was still night the rain had stopped, it was still dark. But the coal had no shimmer, had no glory about it. It just stood out, though, in great contrast to the diamonds. But you could see that they'd been squeezed, but had not made the cut in the diamonds. So there was, there was, you could see the intention. These, these, this coal had been, had been, had been pushed as well, had been squeezed. And Franklin was standing there admiring the scene. And he solemnly said, just very clearly, I guess we are no longer a republic. And the father spoke and said, no, it's mine now. No, it's mine now, as is the whole earth. And Franklin asked, he said, where, where did the globe go that was attached to the flag? And the father spoke and he said, it's still being pressured for now, but will, will, but will be released in good time. And then he said to Franklin, keep your glasses on, your eyes sharp, and stay committed to the captain. This dream gave me some hope. Uh, we know that eventually there's going to be some, some Antichrist work going on. The spirit of Antichrist is already here, according to 1 John. 
Several items continue to appear in my dreams. The American flag, historical figures, the kind of nation that we were at times. But once again, when, when Franklin said, I guess we're no longer a republic, the father's, stated, the father's voice stated clearly, no, it's mine now, as is the whole earth. And Franklin asked where the globe was that had been attached to the flag, and the father said, it's still being pressured for now. And that was the words he used, pressured for now. But it will be released in good time. Keep your glasses on, your eyes sharp, and stay committed to the captain. Now, that's Dana Coverstone with his two dreams, basically on the future of our country. Could this mean the end of the Republic of the United States of America as we know it? And could this be a good thing or a bad thing? Well, in the second half of our podcast, Krista Alicia could shed some light on that very fact. We'll be right back. Are you interested in scary places? Well, I found a great podcast called Your Haunted Holiday. Each week, sisters Lisa and Lindsay will take you to some of the most haunted places in the world. Their incredible research into how these places became haunted is complemented by their insight into the ghostly activities that are present. They give you information on ghost tours, prices, and much more. That's Your Haunted Holiday. You can go to yourhauntedholiday.com or just listen to wherever great podcasts are found. Now we'll hear from Krista Alicia on a powerful message, a vision she had, as well as a word from the Lord on the future of our country that could start as a result of the investigations into this election fraud and the future of the mainstream media. Hey friends, this is Krista Alicia and um, I just wanted to hop on here and I wanted to share with you a word that the Lord just gave me regarding our nation. Um, You know, It's uh, November uh, 13th, so it's Friday the 13th today, and um, like most of us in the body of Christ with the situation that's going on with the elections and, you know, all this, we've just been praying and uh, seeking the Lord. Uh, I know I have um, personally been praying and seeking the Lord and and, uh, praying for our nation and for protection over our nation and uh, the uncovering of corruption in our nation. And um, this morning I woke up and I heard the Lord say, I'm releasing a shock wave that will be heard and felt around the world. And so I was just praying into that and uh, I was in my quiet time in my prayer room just you know, within my heart being still before the Lord and waiting for him. And uh, in the spirit, I went into a vision and I saw a door um, and I, the Lord invited me into this door in the spirit, similar to what happened to John in the book of Revelations. And uh, when I went into the door, I was in the future and I realized that the Lord and I were standing in the heavens over the United States of America. I saw a radio tower in the east get struck by a bolt of lightning, and then the lightning dispersed in directions all around the world, hitting other radio towers and causing many of them to collapse. Uh, The Lord said that he is releasing his judgment over the media mountain and many mainstream media outlets will collapse when this shock wave is heard around the world. Um, I know that the shot heard around the world was actually the gunshot that started the Revolutionary War. The Lord said that 
This shock is likewise going to set in motion a new revolution that will last for three years, completely reforming all seven mountains of influence in our country. This is a revolution of bridal love, of purity, and of holiness. It will be a revolution to end all revolutions. So there's more to this, and um, I just want to state before I go into this next part of the word that um, I've never received a word of the Lord like this before. He began to speak to me, and I was just trying to type out what he was saying so that I wouldn't miss anything. And literally, um, he just began to type through me. It was so fast um, and literally just the, electri the electricity of God was coming over me. And now I'm not one to release prophetic words hastily. And if any of this does not come to pass, I'm willing to take full responsibility for it. But it is my uh, responsibility to do what the Lord asked me to do. And I feel like the Lord asked me to make this video to release this word over our nation. So um, with that being said, here it is. I heard the Spirit of God say, I am breaking the shackles from my great evangelist nation, America. America, you were founded and established to be my harvesters, but evil men took you into captivity to delay and deny my son his spotless bride. I have set my face against your enemies and I have come riding on the clouds to break your gates of cap captivity. This is the year of Jubilee and you will decree Jubilee to the nations of the earth. No longer will you carry the chains of slavery, my dear America, but those in high places who have broke their oath of covenant with me that I have established with your founding fathers, I will remove them from their posts. I have heard your prayers and petitions, dear America. You are precious to me. My plans for you are still good. The Lord who has started a work in you shall see it to completion. Your humble petitions and earnest heartfelt repentance have reached my ears and lo and behold I will certainly come and forgive you and heal your land I am even healing your land as we speak there is a spurge that I am accomplishing even now behind the scenes a spurge followed by a surge of my power and glory shall strike your land the likes of which the world has never seen the surge will cause a wave of the fear of the Lord and many will be arrested with awe and wonder as they see what I'm about to do for behold I do a new thing you have asked and so you shall receive the former and the latter rain and my spirit shall come down and I will pour myself out upon you O America the beautiful oh say can you see the amber waves of grain the harvest is ripe and the workers have been few but now says the Lord I shall send you first in your own land and then I will release the American American evangelists like a swarm of locusts across the nation. You will be the forerunners of global harvest. Who? You will devour what was sent to devour you. I will be your God and you will again be my people and I will remove the curse from your land. Yes, the pestilence will disappear. Your enemies who have mocked you will grovel at your feet and be swept away. Lift, infertility will be lifted. Poverty lifted. Sickness lifted. Division lifted. All these curses that evil people in your government have brought upon your land for breaking the covenant to keep you the nation whose God is the Lord. They have broke their oath to honor me as your God and to protect my people from all enemies, both foreign and domestic. Instead, they have abused their office and prostituted themselves with the gods of Mammon, Moloch, Asherah, and Baal, and thus have set themselves as my enemies. Even now the prayers of my ecclesia are as a battering ram and as an iron rod in my hand, and with one strike of my mighty right hand, the wicked rulers are 
crumbling. My arm is not too short to save. Yes, I am the Lord, your redeemer. Salvation comes from me alone and I shall not share my glory. My trumpet shall herald the call of my people and they will come running to rebuild the ancient ruins of righteousness in your nation. Let every man be a liar, but the word of the Lord shall stand and prove true for you shall see the land cleansed from the wave of innocent blood of 60 million babies and a red wave of redemptive blood of Jesus shall cover your nation and wash it white as snow. My plans and purposes will not be aborted for America. You will not be known as the city forsaken, but I give you a new name because I love America. I will not keep still because my heart yearns for you. I will not remain silent. I will not stop praying and working for her until her righteousness shines like the dawn and her salvation bla blazes like a burning torch. The nations will see your righteousness. World leaders will be blinded by your glory and you will be given a new name by the Lord's own mouth. The Lord will hold you in his hand for the world to see a splendid crown in the hand of your God. Never again will you be called the forsaken or the desolate, desolate land. Your new name will be the nation of God's delight and the bride of God for the Lord delights in you and will claim you as his bride. Your children will commit themselves to you, O land of the free and home of the brave, just as a young man commits himself to his bride. Then God will rejoice over you as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride. O America, I have posted the watchmen on your walls and they have prayed day and night continually. They have not taken rest who have prayed to the Lord so that they will see my work complete. The Lord has sworn to you, America, by his own strength. I will never hand you over to your enemies. Never will foreign warriors come and take away your grain and your new wine. You raise the grain and you will eat it, praising the Lord. Within the courtyards of the temple, you yourselves will drink the wine you have pressed. Go out through the gates, prepare the highway for my people to return. Smooth out the road, pull out the boulders, raise the flag, hoist the flag, the appeal to the heaven flag and the American flag for all the nations to see. The Lord has sent this message to every land. Tell the people of America, look, your savior God is coming. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. They will be called the holy people, the people redeemed by the Lord. And Washington, D.C. will be known as Washington, the desirable city. The veil is torn and the new Jesus people movement is born today in America. Let liberty bells ring for the Lord your God pronounces that you are one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Wow. Um, so that is the word that the Lord gave me. Um, if you are watching this video and it witnesses with your spirit, please share so that the rest of the body of Christ can come into agreement with this word and uh, stand the line, stand the line. Um, I feel that tomorrow, uh, it's uh, November 14th, is going to be a um, groundbreaking day in our nation. So I bless you guys. Thanks for watching. Now that's Krista Alicia on the future of our country in a very positive message and I think it's quite inspiring. Now if you'd like to make a comment or suggestion on our podcast, please do that through our email now is the Watchman on the Wall 2020 at gmail.com. That's the Watchman on the Wall 2020 at gmail.com. We'll be right back after this message. Are you looking for a good quality used car but don't want to pay an arm and a leg? 
Well, come into Rainy Used Cars. We have the largest selection in the Southeast. Whether you want a pickup or a quality SUV from mom, you'll find a variety of vehicles to choose from. We even finance. So come in today. You'll find a Rainy Used Cars located near you. Thanks again for listening, and if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends. Also, give us a like. We welcome any comments or suggestions you might have. We also ask you to subscribe so that you will be notified of all our future episodes. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on the Watchman on the Wall podcast. (music) 